Liberty goes to school pretty close to here. Yeah, just down the street. She goes. She goes to the Booker T. Washington, the, to the Arts Magnet down the street. Uh, first of all, show us your work. I told you earlier that the the, the great desire that that my wife and have I have about art is art is someone's idea of an image of a thing in their life. And if you look at it closely, what it allows you to do is connect with that other person through their eyes. Now this is an acrylic piece. So she has painted this with acrylic. I want you to look at it very closely, first of all. This is called Outer Munster. Yeah. Look at, look at it very clo uh, closely. Now, one thing that makes artists really angry is when you see people go to the museum and they do this. They walk up to a piece of art and they do this. Do you know why? Because I'm not telling you that you're not supposed to do that. You are supposed to do that to some degree, but you also step back from the piece. Because what we're trying to do is get their complete understanding of what happened, what was going through their mind. And then we move up close for what's called detail. So what were you thinking when you did this piece? Um, well, at my school, the first two years, you focus a lot on observational drawing. And so it's supposed to be really tight and really detailed. And so with this piece, I was trying to be more expressive. And um, Munster is a, t is a small town that I have a lot of family in. So it's sort of nostalgic for me. And I just wanted it to be more expressive than objective. And that's what I was really focusing on. So when, when a person is walking up there, okay, your work has been purchased by the DMA. They walk up to your piece of work. What do you want an observer to see? Um, I just want the first thing that jumps out to be how expressive the line quality is, that it really has movement, even though it's a, like a static image, it's not a figure or an animal of any sort. I want there to be something more than just the picture of a pretty landscape. Everybody got that? So we're not just looking at a pretty landscape. We're looking at your mental snapshot of Munster, what Munster means to you. So when did you first get interested in art? Um, well, I come from an artistic... Oh. Oh, go ahead. Okay, I come from an artistic family, and so um, I've had several cousins who went to my school, and I just grew up with art. And so it was just sort of a natural progression to start doing it myself and go to school for it. One of the interesting things about this, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to work with acrylic. It's not easy. I mean, it's really not very easy to, to, to work with. Why acrylic? Uh, there's an immediacy with acrylic. It's not like oil. You don't have to wait on it. And so when you're doing something expressive, it's nice to just be able to lay it down and then work on top of it if you want to. So, You know, I haven't asked any of our other young artists this yet, but um, have you ever started a piece, gotten a little bit into it and said, nah, you know, this is just not working and had to start over again? Because some people think that, that you never do that. I do that all the time. If something doesn't work, you sometimes you just have to kill it and start over. Um, because I had one drawing teacher who said, don't be married to your first mark, because it's usually not right. Everybody get all that? Because I know this is... It says, don't, don't be married to your first mark because it's usually not right. And that's absolutely, that's absolutely true. So what's next for you? Um, I actually, I want to go to a private four-year art college, but eventually I'd like to work either as a curator or an art dealer rather than a studio artist. Well, that's true. Have you, have you ever done any internships? Uh, not yet, but I'm looking into it for the next couple of summers. Terrific. Let's give her a round of applause. Let's give her a hand.